Hey guys, it's Kugli again with another video and this time I've got the AOS IP ROM for the OnePlus 6T. Now I don't want to call this one a review because it's really not. It's more of a preview just like the Havoc ROM. The reason being it's beta. So anyway, stay tuned for that. So guys, the AOS IP ROM has a long running history, it has been available for almost every OnePlus ROM, at least the ROMs which I've tried or phones which I've tried and it's a great packaged ROM. Now it's one of the first ROMs available for the OnePlus 6T and I've been really really excited about it. Fun fact, I have just 4-5 or five hours back made a review or made a preview of the 14th December version which was the previous version available for this one and uh, well just as I come back well there is a new version that is 26 12th December version and uh, well, I just decided well I already have all my data I'll just carry it over and just give you guys an updated video so here you have it this particular version I may not have used for more than uh, 5 hours but the version before this one that, that is the 14th version I have used it. Now before anything let's get started. First of all what you see here is quick step that is the launcher of choice by the developer works pretty well. Let's get to the settings menu. In the settings menu you can see in the about phone page is that this is well this is one plus 16 no uh, question about that android version is 9 of course it is a beta version of for the fajita and this is the date of release this is december 5 security patches the kernel has been improved or it has been updated to the latest one uh, kind of latest one i mean i have seen 4.9.147 in a few other kernels so yeah, SNS status is enforcing for those who are worried about it. So that is it in the uh, about phone page. Let's get to the other stuff now. Before anything, before I discuss anything on this one, this is a beta ROM. It has a few things which are not working. The main thing of which is the fingerprint scanner. Like any other custom ROM for the 60, apart from OxygenOS ROMs, you don't have fingerprint scanner which is working. The under display fingerprint scan or the screen unlock option is not working on this one. There are a few talks going on in the um, forum page that there is a fix available, which uh, I'm guessing is going to be implemented soon enough. Looking forward to that. Apart from that, everything else is working very well. The previous version did have an issue where Bluetooth uh, connection was kind of finicky and my Bluetooth headphones were not able to connect. This one doesn't seem to have any issues with that. Let's get to the features. Now first of all, VOLT is working as you can see it is VOLIT. Um, yes, it is VOLIT not VOLTE. So that is pretty damn cool. All the extra features are inside Alt's Nest. You can go there in the status bar options. You have battery percentage and all that can be enabled. I have had battery uh, icon enabled or disabled. So on that you can have all of these styles. Battery percentage can be enabled uh, inside the icon, outside the icon, all that. Carrier level can be customized with uh, lock screen only and all the options are available. Clock options are available. You can have alignment for it. Central alignment on this phone would be stupid but anyways that is there. Date options are available. Icon options are available. You can customize Customize that VOLT icon can be enabled or disabled. Height notch is available if you want all of that to be turned black you can have that. It is available with other ROMs also so nothing special there. Network traffic indicator can be enabled and this is the kind of network traffic indicator which I like uh, where it's uh, I mean the network traffic indicator doesn't come here but if you disable or if you drop down to the uh, quick setting panel it will show up here which is really cool I really like that quick setting panel you do have brightness slider controls all of that is available and you can customize that the uh, the position of the auto brightness can also be customized to the right or to the left pretty cool to have and all the uh, the tile options are available in here you can hide the labels quick bar columns can be customized all of that is available and all of these tiles are available at your leisure you have all of options uh, caffeine is available panel modes are available high brightness mode is available small pistols all of that can be customized from here now in the expand options you have vibrate on touch animations can be customized linear interpolator can be customized all of this can be customized from here which is pretty nice to have notification options you do have ambient music ticker which is which will show the music which is currently playing in the ambient display if you want that 
battery LED is available which doesn't really work because our device does not have a LED heads up display is available timeout and snooze timer which is you can customize stop list and backlist is available also notification toast app icon is available and noisy notification if the screen is on you can enable it or disable it now in the navigation options you do have navigation gestures the previous version did not have it this one has it and you can customize that so allow navigation bar right now it is on fling mode you can have stock mode or the smart bar options uh, i personally like the navigation gestures it's not as flushed out as oneplus's navigation options which, which you should expect uh, from a custom ROM but for the most part you can make it work so I've been using it it's not much of an issue hardware button customization is available for power button you can enable uh, advanced reboot from here and also volume button customizations are available for a small variety of options like a control ring volume playback control can be enabled or disabled from here rotation swap all that is available one more thing uh, you do have the uh, volume controls or on the left side rather than on the right side and uh, one thing which I did notice is that control ring volume if you enable it there are two options here which is kind of a glitch and both of them are linked you cannot have it disabled or different but i mean it is available reason button can be customized now this is for customizing if you disable or uninstall quick step if you disable or uninstall quick step it will go the reset menu will go back to a usb style uh, that will have that is supposed to have a clear all button on the bottom if you want that right now the clear all button is, uh, uh, is on the far left side so that's one thing now lock screen options are also available lock screen shortcut can be customized right now it's nothing charging info media cover art and also visualizer can be enabled fingerprint authentication vibration is available face auto unlock is available and that is a very very good feature for a device which does not have fingerprint scanner so that does work out really well quick unlock is also available which is pretty cool now the gesture options you do have a usb gestures which is really cool that is power button uh, double tapping the power button for camera disabling the torch or activating the torch with the power button uh, double tap or even uh, long pressing the power button so that does work out really well it doesn't have the automatic kill for that but it is still there double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar is also available brightness control by sliding across the status bar and also three finger gesture for screenshot is available which is pretty cool it also has the edit button which will give you an editor you can go for markup and that will give you the option to crop it out so i use that a lot but uh, hey it's available in the advanced settings settings options you have app ops if you want to micromanage all the application permissions so you can do have that show cpu info will show you what the uh, this thing is it is eas it is scheduled till which is basically what our device has on the rock so that's one thing you know in call vibration options are available you can enable that which does work out really well that is it in the owl's nest options the rest of the features are basically what you would find in any other fire rom so you do have uh, in the display options adaptive brightness is available colors options are available which is unselectable here but there is an option in the other setting menu which i will get to uh, display cutout now this is a weird option which is available so you can have a tall display cutout out which is like this which will increase the size of status bar i'm not entirely sure what the use of it is but it is available you can also do that i mean dual cutouts available i have no idea why would you would do that and also corner cutout i'm uh, again i'm not sure why you would do that but do let me know if you have any options for that yeah that is something there is also ambient display options available you can have always on button so if you do enable always on that will show up and it is pretty cool it does work out really well and uh yeah new notification advanced options are available it doesn't have hand wave or pocket mode but pickup sensor is available which does work really well ambient music ticker can also be enabled from here apart from the outsourced options now this is something which is there uh theme options now the previous version had a different theming engine uh which was available with other usb roms but the developer has switched to black af theme engine it doesn't seem to work for me uh, i have tried enabling it disabling it restarting everything it doesn't work for me it does have an accent color option and you can customize that but again it doesn't the the dark mode doesn't seem to be working for me and that is what i wanted correctly that's one thing then uh, display density and font sizes can be customized from here which is pretty cool in the sound options you do have customization for almost everything here uh, all the the phone ringtone can be customized for sim 1 and 2 works out really well security options nothing special but uh, everything which you need is available screen pinning encryption is available fingerprint well doesn't work smart lock is available for all the things which you might consider apart from that additional buttons options does have for the alert slider and alert slider is something which is working i really use that vibration strength can also be customized and it is strong at full percentage out of the box this comes with full and uh, that is 
pretty unnerving. I had to put it down a couple of notches to have it make sense. Display modes. Now this is where you have the panel mode sections. Uh, you can customize that. OnePlus mode off or uh, any of that options can be customized. You do also have a tile for it. You can customize that which does work out really well. High brightness mode is available and you can enable that on a tap um, which does work out really well. And that is it in the extra features on this ROM. Um, as you can see it is pretty loaded for a ROM which is available. AOS IP has always been a much more feature rich ROM. This is a beta version for a new device so I can understand if it is not having all the features which is available. Not everything works, I mean the main thing uh, being the fingerprint scanner so just keep that in mind. That's it about the features. Now let's get to the battery life. The battery life is also pretty damn cool. Um, I've been getting almost 13% of active rain which is acceptable and idle rain has been pretty good. Idle rain is uh, less than 1%, about 0.8% of idle rain. Most of my statistics is from the previous version of it. The new version is also behaving the same way so I don't have much doubts about it. That's been pretty cool. Now the Antutu benchmark score. The benchmark score is also pretty uh, cool in my opinion. I've been getting about 29,000 and this is the score which I got with this one. I mean the previous ROM which I made a video on this phone is Havoc and that had an insane score probably because of Smurfs kernel but uh, I mean this one has 29,000 which is still higher than the stock 28,000 which is pretty damn cool so yeah the score is also higher I did not play uh, PUBG or anything of that sort in this one because even with a higher score on uh, even Havoc ROM or a stock based ROM the gameplay experience is basically the same so I don't think there is any uh, reason to play that and uh, waste the time on that so yeah that's pretty cool performance is pretty nice stability of the ROM is okay um, I did have a few force close issues with setting application where I had to force close the setting application and uh, it just didn't, didn't work. The gesture navigation is still a little bit finicky with uh, applications and uh, games basically so I didn't I did have issues with that but I mean apart from that this is a beta version I can forgive this for the most part it is a very stable ROM and you can actually use this as a daily driver if you don't use fingerprint scanners. Now the camera it actually comes with a Google camera pre-installed and it actually works Works. and yes you can see there is a tick mark on HDR plus it is the full version fully featured version it does have night side also which does work you don't have to worry about it the only thing I guess which doesn't work in this one is 4k 60 FPS that automatically takes 4k 30 FPS photographs or videos so portrait mode works portrait uh, selfie works night side selfie works everything works you can actually update to any newer version which comes around from the link in the description so it works it's pretty cool now the aesthetics of the rom aesthetics uh i i got to say aesthetics is not really cool because the, the main reason is the blackout mode does just doesn't work it refuses to work i have tried restarting the device i have tried uh, restarting system UI I have tried doing a lot of things uh, but you do still have substratum with the root you can use that it's nothing special but I mean you do need root for that it, it should work really well it should work as it's expected so nothing special going on there the overall experience of the ROM the overall experience of the ROM is uh, pretty basic I mean it is a beta ROM it is a beta rom on a very new device which is not even fully flushed out yet i mean this device just recently got a fully official team in recovery and between the decryption issues and uh, ha having issues with backup and restore it's still a struggle so uh, yeah we might have to wait a little bit more for a very very good performance oriented battery related ROM which can actually take over Oxygen OS. I, I do have hope in this one so that's pretty much. Let me show you guys the boot animation which uh, I mean if you have been fan of AOS IP you will be familiar with. So there you have it that is the boot animation for AOS IP ROM. Well let's say it's electrifying. <laughs> So guys, there you have it. That is the AOS IP ROM beta for the OnePlus 6T. Hope you guys liked the video. Please share, subscribe and like the video if you found it useful. See you guys next time. Bye.